Hey, hey, Tony guys here popping in with another episode of Talks with Tony. Now, this one is titled, they titled it Female at Church. Dear Tony, there's a female dating a deacon that go to my church. They've been dating for about eight years now. She said they're just friends. He flirts with me at times, but nothing serious. I've never disrespected her or tempted him in any way. She called my phone asking for him. I told her she had the wrong number. Me and him never dating or got to know each other. I was going to ignore it until I went to a women's meeting. Everyone received a gift but me. I am now being shunned from a couple of the females. I can't call them women because they're acting like children. I'm old school, so I'm ready to confront her, but I also want to do it in a classy Christian way. What advice can you give me? Sincerely, confused Christian woman. Well, i tell you this. You know, <laughs> something going on. I don't know if he making her think that so that she'll be insecure or if she done seen some messages from him to you or what's going on. But if I were you, I would confront her if you want to stay at the church. If not, if you don't want to confront her, you got to say what matters most, staying at the church or confronting her. If you don't want to confront her, then just deal with being shunned and you going for God. If you do confront her, 99.9% .9 of people ain't bought that life, like in a sense of like she ready to throw down. You just say, hey, sister, you know, I want to talk to you. Just like that. Hey, sister, hey, will you have a minute? Now, listen, I, I went to a women's meeting and everybody got a gift except me. And then I've been noticing a little funny energy from a few people and I'm just wondering if this has anything to do with Deacon such and such. Because he and I have nothing going on. I've never dated him. We don't talk like that. I've never been a temptress to him. So I just, I don't know what you have going on or what your thought process may be. But I just want to assure you, he and I have nothing going on. Did he tell you something? Did he tell you? And just like that right there. And that's going to clear that air. It's going to get to talk to her. And she may want to be friends with you because people believe in keeping their enemies closer. So if she feel like you could be a potential threat, she may want to kick it with you and talk to you just to keep an eye on you and just to build that rapport with you so that you don't deal with her man. So that's what you got to realize on that one. But when you get to going into all that kind of drama like that, and you probably did a little something in here. You did one side of the story. You and on, you and deep. You in deep, uh-huh, because for her to call your phone and ask for him, your name that came up somewhere now, so you might want to get a little, little more clarity on that there situation. Hey, Tony, hope everything is going well. I was saved in 2018. Since then, my relationship with God has been at home and very few times at church. So I came to know a 37-year-old man in December 2020. We had a conversation, and he said he was looking for someone he has a lot in common. And he noticed that I have a very feminine energy. And we had a long conversation about different things. He is a believer, but he is a believer, and they do a little church congregation weekly at his mother's house, and he invited me to start going. So I've been going there. The issue is, he's been in a relationship with his baby mama for the second time, I believe since 2016. According to him, they were first together for four years and lived together and got two sons. Then they broke up. He stopped going to church, to the church. While out of the church, he dated other women, but then returned to the church and got right with God. And that's when he started dating his baby mama again. The issue is he's been in a relationship with his baby mama for the second time, I believe since 2016. According to him, they were first together for, for four years and lived together and got two sons. Then they broke up. He stopped going to the church. While out of the church, he dated other women, but then returned to the church and got right with God. And that's when he started dating his baby mama again. Since we knew each other, 
we had three other long conversations about different things. And he talked about that too. He asked me some questions and found out I'm, I'm a virgin. He told me he and his baby mama do not talk like we do. And he confessed the first time we met, he felt very attracted to me. And especially after found, finding out I was very feminine in energy and the way I think and that I'm different. There were some flirtations. The last conversation was in June 2021. He said he feels incomplete with her and that they have a beautiful friendship. I remember once he tried to hug me, but I got out from his arms and I said that it's not right. We kept talking at the end. He figured out he had to go and be done with his baby mama. It seemed to me he was confused because he said, what am I going to do? So because of what we talked about, I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt and just observe. In September 2021, she traveled long distance to work as a teacher in a new place. He stayed and two months later, we had a little conversation. He admitted I was right when I said, it's not right to be flirting and hugging each other while he is still in that situation. and that he decided to stop, that he was putting our friendship at risk and that he was falling with me, failing with me, with God and with himself, and that he is now starting to really develop a Christian love for me. And he still confirmed that he decided he is going to be done with that, but he said he could do it now or take some time to do it. The way he talked, he seemed very honest. But two weeks later, he traveled to the same place on vacation, and I feel horrible and confused. Since then, I stopped going to the church service at his place, and I started taking some driving license classes so I can use it as an excuse because he knows I stopped going, and he messages me asking about those classes and to hurry up and so I can return. I just want some time to clear my mind. It's February, he's still over there on vacation, and I see nothing being done, and I'm starting to get so confused. Since he went, he tried to message me a few times to get news. I reply a few times, but I keep it cool and short since I eventually leave the chat on red. So days ago, he called three times, but I didn't answer because I start to feel hurt and confused, and maybe that I'm being strung along. All this time we've been nice friends though. It it's just feel I confused. I don't know what to think or do. I'm thinking if he asks me if something is wrong, I'll tell him after some time. I started to feel like I'm being treated as a second plan and that's why I try to stay away. Please, what do I do, Tony? Should I give him a chance to prove himself? What slash how do I tell him? No, you don't give him no chance to prove itself. Go on about the business. Go on about the business. The reason why you got got to go on about the business on this is he playing too many games. He 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 too back and forth. He too back and forth, and he done went over there on vacation where she at. And he's still over there. And he messaging you, so he juggling. You know, he trying to keep her and keep her in good graces. He got a soul tie with her. He got kids with her. So maybe he's trying to stay off child support and make her feel like they have some type of relationship. But then he also want to have his cake and eat it too. He want to have you over there on the side and be building with you. You a virgin. He know you a virgin. So he, he know he doesn't have to be in a rush with you. He don't have to rush. He could take his time. He can just make love to your mind. Just talk to you like that. Build with you like that. And then eventually get you on your bike. Eventually can get you on your bike. That's what he hoping for. But you playing yourself. He juggling you. He playing you. This ain't that ain't worth it. That ain't worth it. Huh? Let me see. Let me see. Hello, Tony. I watch a lot of your YouTube videos, and they and they're very beneficial for me. I was wondering, could you do a video on this topic? So my husband. And I have been married for three years. He's not ready for kids yet, but I am. He initially said four years from the date we got married, which was in 2019. So next year will be four years. But he said he still doesn't feel he'll be ready. Then he would just go ahead with it 
to be a man of his words. Kids are my peace, happiness, and focus. It's not his focus. He's never been a huge fan of kids. He said he's 50-50 on having them. He says he's fine with or without them. He also thinks it takes all this kind of money to have a kid. He said he wants a $200,000 job. If not that, then a $100,000 job. He said he'll also settle for a $70,000 job. But I'm wondering what job is he going to get paying that salary with no experience hardly and no education. He's currently in the military. Could you help me on this? When y'all put what the man be saying, it just kind of be making me chuckle a little bit. <laughs> but in the military, but he want 200K. <laughs> so he want 200. <laughs> then my boy say, not that he want 100. <laughs> and then, my boy say, shoot, I'll settle for 70. <laughs> Y'all gotta forgive him now. Y'all gotta forgive him. But that just was hilarious to me because boy, it went from 200 to 70. <laughs> so I'm guessing in the military he had about 30. I'm guessing he had about 30. But it's like, man, listen. <laughs> 70. Shoot. 70 get me right. <laughs> so listen. Woo. Boy, that's a big jump. That's a big jump. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, I would say, I'm going to be honest with you. He say he 50 50 on having kids. Honestly, just this just me, and I'm this just a guesstimate. I feel like 50% to 70% of men who say they don't want kids is gay. That's just honestly how I feel because as a man, I feel like your pride and joy is to see your seed. Like, I want to have me a child early. Like, I want to see it just, it's also a part of a male ego. Like, you want to see what you look like in the form of another human. Like, that's a powerful place to be, to be able to make life, like, to create life. Like, that's powerful. And to be honest with you, like, if my wife was with it, it just, she gives so much. And I really don't want no third child. But I would do it, though. I would do it just because, like, that's powerful. And it's like, the more chances you have to have them kids and to have an impact and to raise them kids, like, you don't know what them kids going to become. Like, them kids could become great. You know, them kids could be... Could change the world with your influence in their life. So I I just can't really me as a man, I cannot understand a man. So that's why I say I'm not gonna say every man who don't want kids is gay. And I'm not I'm not saying gay in a derogatory way either. I'm just saying like a man who is with a man, they can't have kids. They can't produce kids. So a man who don't have a desire to have kids, it feel like he got that type of passion or desire for him a man where they can't have kids together anyway they got to adopt or get a surrogate or something so it just i i, I i'm I'm just ah man mm. that's interesting though that's interesting so i'm gonna tell you like this right here i man, i hate the fact that you married you married, you've been married for three years, and the man came in and told you four years. So to be honest with you, you made a huge mistake by marrying somebody. Like, the decision on children is foundational. So you should not go into a marriage with somebody who don't want what you want on the foundation. And so that's family. That's one of the Fs. That's a foundational F, family. If y'all don't feel the same about family, you shouldn't have married the man. Because a man who don't want kids, you just don't know how to take that. Because if I'm a man, and I'm, t I'm speaking from male energy, male mentality, if I say I don't want kids, and I give in and I have kids, I'm going to be mistreating them kids. I'm going to be letting them roll off the changing table and hit their head on the ground. 
And I did it on accident with my son that I love. I, I let my son roll off the changing table. God forgive me. He turned out great. 14 years old, straight A's, turned out great. But I didn't realize they were flipping like that. And so I was getting ready to change his diaper and I had him on the change table. And I went to run to the sink real quick uh, to wash something off. I can remember if it was pacifier washing off to put it in his mouth or what. And when I went to run to the sink, he did like this. Shoot. Don't call DCF on me. Lord willing, now, he made it. He hit the carpet. And, you know, he made it. And he turned out great. But imagine if I didn't love my son. If I didn't want my son. You see what I'm saying? So I really honestly, and I'm going to tell y'all. 90% of men. We bad with kids. 90% of men. I know some of y'all, oh, my grandfather great with kids. My daddy great with kids. My husband great with kids. We all great with kids in front of a woman. But it's not in a man's nature to be great with kids. We're not wired to be great with kids. And the men who are great with kids, they also childish. Meaning they cheat on you. They watch pornography. And they play video games. And they childish. And I don't mean in a derogatory way, but they just, they relate with the kids so well because they kind of in a kid mind state. But a man's mind is very high level of earning and producing and making money to provide that it's hard to go from being this high producer to make money to being relating with a child. It's just, it's harder for a man. But the child come out the woman, so she naturally, her brain is wired differently to nurture and care for that child. So me personally, I would never recommend a woman have kids with a man who say he 50-50 on kids. Because it's men who are beating kids to death. It's men who taking the lives of kids, of their own kids, their girlfriend, kid, just, just different things. You turn on the news, that's happening every day in our, in our world. So sister, you you're in a real tough situation. I, I I don't recommend I don't trust it. I don't trust to have kids with this man here. And maybe if that he fifty fifty, maybe when you get pregnant and you have a child, maybe when he see his child, it speak to something. Maybe it's a void, maybe it's some abandonment issues and some things he dealing with that make him fearful of how if he gonna be adequate for that child if he's gonna be enough and so maybe it's some things like that i don't know but i feel for you sister i feel for you so that but that's that's a personal choice though on that one my first heartbreak let's see 17 minutes some of y'all sent these to my support and i just forwarded them over but these met these emails don't go to support god bless you Good morning. I hope you and your family are having a wonderful year so far. I wish I could go into detail word for word, day by day, but then I'll be writing a book. But just jumping into why I'm emailing you. Basically, I fell deeply in love with someone who ended up pushing me away to cheat. Who ended up pushing me away to cheat. I don't know who cheated, by the way that's written. I don't know, he pushed you away so he could cheat or he pushed you away and pushed you to cheat. I'm 22 years old and he is now 25. We have been together for six months before I moved to Washington, D.C. for money purposes. Me and him decided that he would move up here so that he could move out of his sister's house and save more money while making more money. We took turns visiting each other every other month. But through time, he would ignore me for days because he was thinking I was cheating. And when I would communicate how it makes me feel, which I told him that when you really love someone, you would never allow them to go to sleep crying and ignore their calls. I have never ignored his calls no matter what. He would always snap on me for thinking I'm with someone else in the middle of the night while we are on FaceTime and my phone eventually dies. But I gave him permission at the beginning of our relationship to ask me any questions that may be bothering him so that we can communicate and I show him all the proof he needs that I'm being loyal. His ex cheated on him. 
His ex cheated on him. He drove 10 hours again from Atlanta to come spend our first Thanksgiving together. I'm in this happy moment because I scrubbed this apartment that I moved into up and down and turned it into something really nice for us. She put us in all capital. Not only is Christmas coming up, but New Year's, his birthday, and Valentine's Day. Our one one our one year anniversary, not to mention he said that he's going to move up here before the year is over. So every day I'm falling deeper in love. He went home after Thanksgiving, and that's when things go down. He first tells me his friend passed, so I try to be there for him, but he snapped on me and said he needed time. He ignored me for the next two days. I eventually got in contact with him, but that wasn't until my phone completely broken coincidentally, but he knew my phone was in a horrible state when he came here. I told him that I would have to wait till in the morning to get it fixed, and that stemmed in and that stemmed to him snapping on me, saying I was cheating, and he ignored me for three days. I got in touch with him eventually, and he still couldn't believe I was telling the truth. And he told me he was mad, the way I reacted to him cussing me out. He was mad at the way I reacted to him cussing me out. I got in touch with him eventually, and he still couldn't believe I was telling the truth and he told me he was mad at the way I reacted to him cussing me out when I reacted I basically told him I'm tired of him accusing me of cheating and punishing me for it I told him not only did I have to pay 150 for my phone to get fixed but I just paid 350 for tickets to see him and on top of that I'm trying to get his gifts and me paying full rent and he never checked on me during this stressful time. Fast forward to the cheating. After that last conversation, he ignored me for two weeks and I still went to see him. I did get in contact with him a few days before my flight. By this time, I saw on his page that he was liking all of this girl's stuff. Mind you, he stayed on my neck about doing that type of stuff. I couldn't like pictures, talk to anyone, etc. He even told me he hoped I never leave him for someone who has more. He said he would never leave or cheat because blah, blah, blah. So I figured he was cheating. So he didn't come and get me on Christmas, but came the next morning. But usually he would have came and got me. So I spent a day with him and the next, and the next night we had sex and he told me he was going to the store at 10 p.m. But didn't come back until 3 a.m. He tried to lie at first, but eventually told me he went to see someone else. My heart shattered. He started crying and blowing snot bubbles on his, on his knees, saying that he didn't have sex with her and he wants to work things out. But I just could not pass the fact he left me. So I tried to stay with him for another day, but I couldn't. He was still following her on Instagram, had intentions of still talking to her. And when I calmly asked about it, he said I was pressing him. So now I know he's done, but I still need closure. I cut up his shoes, Nikes, 400 plus Jordan retros, jackets, hats, PS4, because I felt betrayed and played, by the way. But I was going to do worse. I don't glorify doing things like that, but I wanted him to feel something. All of those things could be replaced, but not my heart. Mind you, this is my first real relationship. I never dated in high school because I have three brothers, a mom and a dad that taught me how boys are. Plus the brothers, plus the brothers I made through my brothers. So I was always scared to give my heart away, but this time I gave him the benefit of the doubt and never accused him of cheating and always tried to communicate and make things work no matter what. I trusted him. I ended up spending my whole Christmas break crying and being sick to my stomach. It was bad and I still break down crying day and night. I can't stop. January 21st, I called for final closure. He told me that he felt like I wasn't on him like I used to before when he came for Thanksgiving. 
When I asked why he didn't communicate that, he said he doesn't know. Then I asked why he decided to cheat. He said to fill a void. I asked him what void was there to fill if he knew I was always one call away. He said he doesn't know. I asked why he couldn't call me in those times he felt some type of way. He said his pride. I told him that I knew he wasn't ready to commit because you would never leave someone you are truly in love with and I really thought he was in love with me. I told him that if he was really in love with me that throwing away his pride wouldn't even be a question. If I threw away all of my pride, darn near became a stalker. If I threw away all of my pride, darn near became a stalker. I told him if he really loved me, he would have been up here and he would have done anything to make this work, not give up. I told him I know he pushed me away because he wanted to keep looking around until he found someone he thought was better. I told him that I knew he felt like I wasn't worth all of, all of doing that for. Everything we did was so passionate, put that in all caps, so passionate. He was the one who pressed having a baby. Thank God I thank God it didn't happen. He was the first to say I love you. I met his whole family. He cried to me on multiple occasions about his life. His whole job knows about me. He even went to them to get advice about what he did. He even bought himself a wedding rings too so that people know he's with me. He posted me 24 on IG. But I hate social media because of the problems it can bring. He bought the king size bed for the apartment. We were looking at cars. He pressed all of this and I trusted it and gave myself in ways I never gave before. I softened up all the way for him. I conformed to make him comfortable and now I'm alone. The pain I'm feeling is indescribable. He then, he had the nerve to say he's going to be up here in a few weeks child that's when i got weak and i'm not going to lie but i told him i want all of him or nothing part of me wants to see what he's going to do but i know if he wants me to begin with he would have never let me go i know i'm young and i will eventually get into another relationship but i really wanted this i'm in denial that he really didn't want this forever like he said my question is what if he shows up at my doorstep I want to be done because I'm tired of crying and I never want to hurt like this again. But I'm in love with him, seriously. Oh, Lord. Ah, good. Whoo, Lord. Lord Jesus. Mm. Mm. Let me hit some, uh, some uh, gallon of water. Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying to drink me a gallon of water a day. Man, listen. Now, this what made me quit. This what made me give up on talk to Tony. <laughs> man, this stuff be draining, man. Oh, my good. I'm like, I want to slide out the chair. Because it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. What she, she called this my first heartbreak. That's sad. She 22. He 25. See... These men, where's Summer Walker at? Summer Walker, give me a call. I need to help you write a song. It's going to be called I'm His Therapy. Because you know she be making crazy songs now. It's going to be called I'm His Therapy. These men be using women as therapy. You got retail therapy. You got culinary therapy, food therapy, and then you got feminine, female, woman therapy. And that's all this. So what I summed up, what jumped out to me at the end of this here letter, his ex cheated on him. So what I summed up from this is you were a rebound. You were a rebound. He was still in love with his ex. He's not in love, but he still loved his ex. He's still angry with his ex. And so a lot of these snapping, where you're talking about he snapped here, he snapped there, he snapped there, was him snapping on his ex, but taking it out on you. 
blaming you for cheating, blaming you for cheating. That also was a guilty conscience. Sometimes it's not a guilty conscience. Sometimes it's insecurity from being hurt in the past. But being that he actually was cheating. And I'm like, what kind of lie you going to come up with when you leave at 10 o'clock and come back at 3? That's five hours. Like, what kind of lie is going to cover that? Oh, yeah, so yeah, I got stopped by the police. And then the next day, you know, I'm down there like, like the man. I can't breathe. And then it was like, then somebody came and was like, hey, he can't breathe. Get off of him. Then the police chief came and the police chief was like, listen, we can't have another one of these on our hands. Like, get off of him. And then they had me detained and I'm just sitting in the back just for like hours. I'm just in the back. And then finally they come to the door and was like, you know, sir, we're going to let you go. And you know what? They let they let me go because they didn't want me to sue. Like, that's the story he got to tell. And I'm going to tell you, somebody told that story. Now, that story just came on top of my head. And do you believe? Do you realize? And what he would have did on the way home, he would have, uh, uh, uh. He would have did that till he got him a nice little bruise. He would have uh, took a little skin off his face. And do you believe it's men that told that story right there? Because I just made that up. So do you know that's what the story I would have told? But listen, we're going to call this milk jug cheating. I did this before. I did this before. I was with a young lady. We were staying with my, we were staying with my sister. It was on summer break, I think. And we were staying with my sister. Because we was at my mama's house. My mama and daddy was getting ready to go through a divorce. And... We had I had a little twin size bed in my room, and every now and then, the girl would jump on top of me and be laughing and giggling and making noise, and my bed would be bumping against the wall. And my mama she came to me real stressed out because she she swear she deep and spiritual, and she came to me it was almost like she just got done praying and crying. Tony, I'm gonna ask you one thing: do not be having sex in my house. I said, Mama, I don't be having no sex in your house, and we just be playing around. And so we ended up staying with my sister. My sister was 18. I was 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. I was 20. My sister was 19, was 18. My sister got out the house and she got her a job. My sister was working. She got her apartment. My sister's been grown for like since like 16. She had her first child at 16. She's been a go-getter. She's been independent since like 16. And we were staying at my sister's house. My sister ain't really care for us staying in her house, but she let us stay there. And I remember my sister lived next to just like this hood beauty, what I call a hood beauty, just like like a city girl, look like a city girl or like Trina, but like darker skin than Trina. And I wanted that woman so bad, but she was in the thug. She was in the dope boys. I used to see them come over every now and then, dope boy, all gold, a bunch of gold jewelry or whatever. But anyway, I call this milk jug cheating. I just made that up. And I was with my girlfriend. And I said, hey, I'm going to run to the store. And I had an ex-girlfriend from high school from when I was in like 10th grade or something, 11th grade. And this young lady, we dated. And I had supposedly, I think, her virginity that she gave her virginity to me that's what she told me. so being that i went to college and i'm a football player i'm muscular i'm built girls from where i was from they they think college football mean you're gonna be rich one day you're going to the nfl they don't know much about sports they ain't know much about sports so i was i left and i was like hey i'm on the street i'm gonna come over so as soon as i left she literally lived like maybe five ten minutes up the road and I was able to walk in. It was dark. She was in her own apartment. She lived by herself. It was dark. And we was able to go right to the bedroom. Two, three minutes. Got up. Walked out. It literally was a total of five, ten minutes at the most. And then I was right back home. So it took me about 30 minutes. And why I did that? Is why he did this. Just lost. 
just lost. And this is the stuff that be happening. And so this is what I know as a man. Because, see, I done did all this stuff. So when I be seeing this stuff, I done did all this. And this is what I be trying to get men to understand. Like, these women got it bad. As bad as we think we have it as men from a woman cheating or whatever, women got it a hundred times worse. Because as men, we do some of the dirtiest, foulest stuff. And there are some foul women, but it's nowhere near as many foul women as it is foul men. And that's just me being honest. Like, if I'm telling you, if it was the other way around, I would be on the other side of the fence. I would be in the dark with some spinning on my desk and bashing women if it honestly was true. But I was on the other side of it. I was the man who could do stuff like that. Not the man whose stuff like that was getting done to. Because it depends on how the world treats you. It depends on how you look to women. It depends on what they see in you. So when you are an athlete and you play football, that's a very masculine sport. Not an athlete like a golfer. Ain't, never, ain't knocking golf. Or like a tennis player. Ain't knocking tennis. But when you play football, that's like a man's man sport. And so women, it's a large group of women that's going to treat you totally different than a guy who don't play sports. And a lot of women like athletes. So as athletes, you got a lot of access. So me playing college football and having playing basketball and football my whole life and always being in the top 10% of guys in the league, in the division, in the district, whatever, you get treated differently. And so I was able to play the game and juggle. And, you know, when I got back home, there was no, I stopped by the stove and probably got a jug of milk or something. There was no questioning of my girlfriend. There was not a single question. And then was with her. That's why I do the work that I do. Because I played the game at the highest level. I know how it go down. I know what really happened. And I did this as a broke man. Do you hear me? I was 20 years old in college. No money. I was able to do this with women. So just like this guy, 25 years old, like he able to do this and he broke, busted, and disgusted. And he able to do this. Like this how, this how easy it is out here for a man to be a dog. And I wish when I get the money, Mark Zuckerberg, give me a call. Bill Gates, give me a call. When I get the money, I'm going to do me a network. And I'm going to do me a Super Bowl commercial. When I get the money, I'm going to do me a Super Bowl commercial. Start me a company to do PSAs. I'm going to have a PSA company. Do you hear me? Just to let it be known, like, ladies, y'all getting played. Y'all getting played like it's too easy out here. Especially somewhere like Atlanta, where it's like 20 to 1, 30 to 1. It's wild out here. It is wild out here. And then men got to be out here, got the nerve to be out here crying and complaining like men got it bad. What? Men ain't got it bad? The women got it bad. You see what this young lady, 22 years going through, she up here crying and all of that. This man love bombed her. Then he gaslighting her. All y'all terms. He's some kind of narcissist, what y'all love to use. This all of the all of the therapy terms that we could come up with. Every therapy term we could come up with, this man right here operating in them. You hear me? And so this what happened, sister. And see, this the thing now. You told him, I'm just one phone call away. Why you ain't called me? Why you ain't called me? Was y'all sleeping together? That's why I'm telling y'all, you got to be abstinent. You got to abstain. That is a woman's power is abstinence. That's your power. It's not the end all be all. It ain't 100% foolproof because you could be abstinent. A man could marry you and then he could cheat on you. But I'm telling you, it's your best chance. It is your best chance. Because if a man turn out to be this right here guy, at least you have not given him your body. And when I say your body, don't let him be in between your legs or don't let them be in between your teeth don't let them be in between your cheeks these cheeks or those cheeks don't let him insert in anywhere do you hear me anywhere be abstinent 
until you know that you know. You got to try him by the fire. You got to make sure this man is about his word. You, sister, he used you as a rebound. I hate to break it to you. And now you is, sister, you will be crazy if you're dealing with this man. But see, she wrote me this from January 22nd. It's February or something. In the February. February 28th. So, she probably took this man back by now. She could have took this man back. So, said, listen, if you hear this, I'm going to title it for you. If you hear this here, sister, you got to cut that man loose. You got to cut that man loose. This man here, he vile here. This man here, he foul wall. You hear me? And then you spending all this money. Three fifth on tickets. 150 to fix your phone. $500. Getting his gifts. You Christmas, New Year, birthday, Valentine, one year anniversary. And that might be the problem that you ain't dated. So now you dated and you just out like a deer in headlights. And you a deer standing in the middle of the road. And you see some headlights and you just stand there. Hey! And that's an F-150 coming down that highway. And you think that F-150 finna give you a hug. What thing that F-150 finna do to you? You a deer in headlights in the middle of the road. And then the man get caught. This man need therapy. He need therapy. Because the man get caught. And then he coming home. And y'all gotta forgive him for about laughing. But just the stuff these men be doing. Just to be on the outside now. To be a married man. Be looking in. It just kind of hilarious to me. So the man get caught. And then the man take. And blowing snot bubbles. You say he crying and blowing snot bubbles on his knees. Saying that he didn't sleep with her. And he want to work things out. So now we supposed to believe. He didn't sleep with her. But was over there 10 to 3 a.m. At least 10 to 2.30, however long it took him to get to you. But we supposed to believe that. And then you, and then this is the thing, sis. You book your flight, the man ignoring you for two weeks straight almost. You get in touch with him three days before your flight. You go down there. So now the man got you chasing him. The man got you chasing him. You up there, you scrubbing down the apartment, getting it ready for him. You so happy for love, so ready for love, and this man ain't bit more worth it. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing in here that just jumped out to me. Sister, when you get hurt, I'm going to tell you what. Don't ever in your life, ever in your life, seek revenge. You Revenge do not pay. Vengeance in mind, said the Lord. Let him go on by his business. He's going to be done caught AIDS out here. It, he'll get his. But this right here, cut up his shoes, Nikes, $400 plus. Jordan retro jackets, hats, PS4. I felt betrayed and played, by the way, but I was going to do worse. Listen, sister, that could cost you your life. That can cost you your life. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth your life. Like, don't, don't, don't do that to a man. Because although he cheated, if then to revenge on him, get revenge by cheating would be stupid because you putting yourself in harm's way. And I know it don't sound fair. Oh, you just want me to walk away? Listen, yeah, you walk away and you walk away with the lesson that you got to keep your legs closed and keep your eyes open. And you got to pay closer attention next time. And you got to take your time and you can't be rushing stuff. Talking for six months, then talking about moving in together. And then you took and you moved to Washington, D.C. for money purposes. And... And after six months, you basically planning a whole marriage. After six months, you don't even know the man. So you have to get the lesson. You walk away with a lesson. What they say, not every loss is a loss. Losing him, that's a gain. Because you losing a bum. You losing a low down, dirty man. You not losing a man. You losing a grown boy. You losing an insecure, hurt, and lost grown boy. You not losing nothing. So what you got to do, you got to keep getting this knowledge that you're getting. You need to go on uh, TonyGasAcademy.com. I think all the love and relationship courses are $15. And I got a love and relationship bundle. Get the bundle because it's $75 for the whole bundle. And I need you to sit down and take your time and go through them videos one by one. Get you a notepad and take notes as you're watching them videos. 
and and take notes when you watch these YouTube videos if you can't afford a course. But you got to get knowledge on men and relationships. I got a course, Dating 101, Understanding Men. We got a course, Real Love University. Got a course, When to Let Go. Got a course, Healing. Healing Your Heart. Got the master class tomorrow night is on healing. It's tomorrow night. It's on Zoom. I'm teaching it live. It's not a course. Go to TonyGasAcademy.com. Sign up for the healing class tomorrow night. It's at 9 p.m. It's a teaching. It's a teaching. It's not a discussion or a Q and A unless I finish inside of them two and a half, two hours, and then I answer some questions until the time is up. But get on TonyGasAcademy.com right now. Let's tell me because you have to learn the game. If you're gonna be out here, you got to learn about men. You got to know what you're doing. And I'm going to tell y'all, the number one safe way right now is to close your legs. Because when your legs is closed, you gonna, your eyes will be open. You will have clarity. You will see differently. You will hear differently. You will move differently. And then what's going to happen is you're going to be able, you're going to be able to push a grown boy away because a grown boy he want to get him some and if your legs close he gonna get fed up and he gonna move on with his life and so if you don't believe in waiting until marriage your legs need to be closed and y'all need to be dating actively talking every single day but your legs need to be closed no sexual activity for at least six months for at least six months and i'm gonna be honest with you when you hit six months you can't open up on the next day you can't on day 181 you can't be spread eagle because men watch these videos too so they're gonna say oh okay tony gaston telling me yo's i said yo's now last time i said something sound like i used the h word i said yo's y-o-s tony gaston and i'm saying this is what the man saying he's he using the h word though tony gaston telling me yo's y-o-s that they need to wait six months. Okay, so I'm finna just take my heart out of it, just delete all emotion, delete all feeling, and then boom, day 81, he got his calendar. He counting off the day. Day 81, and the thing about it with women, when y'all get advice, you take it too literal. You got the, it just, it just a benchmark. You take it too literal. So literally, 50% of women who hear me say that, well, legs will be open on day 181. I guarantee it. Y'all cannot be robotic. You got to be intuitive. You got to be spiritual. You got to trust your intuition. Like you got to use common sense. You got to trust yourself. You got to listen to yourself. You got to stop being deer in headlights. Please. Please. Y'all working me. Y'all draining me. I'm like, my goodness, please. I'm crying out in the wilderness where y'all please respect y'all self. Where y'all please stop putting up with these grown boys. Where y'all please stop letting these grown boys run in and out your life. Y'all together, grown boys and grown girls, y'all is ruining society. Y'all is ruining society. Because what's going to happen when y'all have a child? Illegitimate co-parenting but he not co-parenting he's sleeping with other women he doing other stuff so now the child is confused lost hurting broken and then the child grew up to be just like him that's ruining society y'all got to do better you got to be stronger you got to be smarter you got to be wiser you have got to you got to Trust me when I'm telling you, now. Trust me when I'm telling you. This right here, y'all, please. Let me get away from the video real quick and just, I need to make my other video public real quick that I shot. Y'all, please, come on now. I'm begging you. I am begging you. Please. Use common sense. When a man do you wrong, okay? When a man do you wrong, stop letting that man drag you along. Stop letting that man mistreat you and dog you out and do you like that. Stop letting that man do that. 
Because what's going to happen is when you're doing that, what's going to happen? Y'all give me one second. He lose respect for you. He loses respect for you. And then he just wants to use you. So now he don't respect you. And because he don't respect you, he takes and he runs in and out your life. So he running in and out your life. And by running in and out your life, you start to seek approval from him. And because you seek an approval from him, you get to a place to where you're letting him use you. And then you forget who you are. You forget who you are. And then as you forgot who you are, you then lose all hope for a future. You lose all hope for meeting somebody else. And you feel stuck and you feel trapped. And you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to get to a place to where you know who you are, where you love yourself, and to where you are able to be there for you. And you have to be strong enough to walk away. And you got to understand that this is not rocket science. It's science, but it ain't rocket science. It's relationship science. And in this relationship science, I just made that up. What you have to realize is that this is a, this a form of chemistry, but y'all got to know how to coexist. And you have to understand that the main ingredient is respect. The main ingredient is respect. And so when you have respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you got to have that respect. Tell me what it mean. And so if you're not being respected, if you got to be calling somebody, calling somebody, chasing somebody, chasing somebody, you're not being respected, you got to pull back. Even if you marry, you got to pull back. When you marry, you got to get a little distant. You got to stop giving so much. You got to you got to chill. You got to calm back. You got to gather yourself. You got to focus on you. You got to focus on your work. You got to do you. You got to go ahead and grind. You got to. You got to do it. And then when you pull back and you stop chasing, you stop begging, you calling him, he ignoring you, he ignoring you, you calling him, you calling him, you calling him. Like you say, you became a stalker. He made you psychotic. He got all the power. He got all the power and he just breadcrumbing you. Somebody made that term up. He just lean you, just lean you, just he go like a little mouse, just training you. He go get the little crumb. All right, one more crumb, one more crumb, one more crumb, one more crumb. One more crumb. And then he leading you to the trap. <laughs> gonna snap your neck. And what that mean is he gonna have your trap. You're gonna be barefoot and pregnant. You're gonna be brainwashed. You're gonna be depleted. You're gonna have lost your all of yourself. You got to demand respect. And if you're not getting respect, you're gonna have to get gone. If you ain't getting respect, you're gonna have to get gone. I'm gonna tell you that right there. And so you got to understand that. You got to understand that. So listen to me. Listen to me. Love yourself. Respect yourself. And demand respect. Stop letting people disrespect you. Stop letting people drag you along. Stop letting people treat you like an option. Treat you like a second chance. And listen to me. Take this right here and show this to this man. Listen. Listen. Bruh, you got to get your life together because you're going to have to answer to God for this foolishness. This mess you out here doing, you're going to have to answer to God. You see the work that I'm doing? Yeah, draining. Yeah, tiring. But I got to do this for God. I can't care about how you feel. I can't care about how another man feel. This me righting my wrongs. You want to be sentenced to this for the rest of your life for the dirt you done did, dirt dauber. You got to get your life together because you acting like a punk. And I don't know who you looking up to, but you need new role models. You got to slap yourself in the mouth. You got to punch yourself in the mouth. You got to punch yourself in the chest. And you got to wake up. You got to wake up because you're going to end up losing everything. You're going to end up messing with the wrong woman and she's going to take your life. Like this woman right here. 
It's different variations. She cut up some Jordans and PS4s and, and some Nikes. You do this to the wrong woman and, and you, the straw that broke the camel's back, you're going to be going to meet your brother down there, Satan. Because you ain't doing all this and going to heaven. You finna be right down there in flames for eternity. You hear me? I'm telling you, man. Listen. Listen. It's on with men playing games like this, it's only a few destinations. The poor house, the crazy house, the insane asylum, the prison, or the grave. Or the hospital. Getting your pills for your HIV and for your syphilis. And for you, everything else you done caught. There's only a few. It's only a few destinations when you plan and you juggling women heart. You plan with women heart. I thank God I got out early. I thank God I got out the game 21 years old. I thank God because I'm serious. You got to take this thing serious. You got to take this thing serious because everybody gonna have the same grace. Everybody gonna have the same favor. Everybody, you, you you go too long, you might lose it all. You go too long, you might lose it all. I'm here to tell you now. You playing with it. You playing with it. So get your life together, young man. Get your life together. Grow up. Apologize to this woman. Here you is. And this the dumbest thing in the world to me. Y'all boys, it's hard to find a good woman. It's hard to find a good woman because of how women believing and acting today all focused just on money just focus on money but here you is got the opportunity to have a good woman this woman up here preparing a place for you she out there like proverbs 31 preparing a place for you and want your grown stanky booty behind to come up there and live off of her come up there and save money while you can work and cheat Come on now. That's dumb. How you gonna have a woman that's gonna be good to you like that and then you gonna spit in her face? It's like if she's not the one you want, at least be man enough to say, hey, we're not a fit and this is not gonna work and I don't wanna drag you along. I don't wanna drag you along. I don't wanna mistreat you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this go. Just like that. I'm going to let this go. Come on now. Come on now. Get your life together. To the man and to the woman. Get y'all life together. Y'all got to do better. You got to love yourself. You got to respect yourself on both sides. You got to love yourself. You got to respect yourself and get your life together. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. Um, Tomorrow is the first so if you're on my Patreon, just know that they charge you on the first of every month. And if you haven't signed up and you want to sign up, wait till the first. That way you don't get charged for the day and tomorrow. But I appreciate y'all over there. We working on some things as we speak, getting things in order. And to everybody on the Blessed Tribe and the Blessed Business Tribe, to the moderators, thank you so much for the support. And make sure also, if you need to do a deep dive, get over there to TonyGasAcademy.com. Everything I put into a course. And I'm different over there on TonyGasAcademy.com. Some of y'all, y'all mentioned that to me. Over there, my courses, I'm teaching them serious. I'm serious over there. I don't be, you know, laughing and joking and telling jokes. It's, it's like class. So you're watching the video, have your note, notebook and be taking your notes. The Love and Relationship Bundle right now is only... Seventy-five dollars. It was two hundred or two fifty. It's seventy-five dollars. The love and relationship, but then it's also business. There's a bunch of business courses on there too. Birth your book, become a speaker, do the mailing list. If you want to be a ghostwriter, I just did a ghostwriting course. For the longest, I wrote several books at charging ten thousand dollars. So if you're a writer, I got a ghostwriting course teaching you how to do that. My course is real. I don't do sham courses. I do courses from real life. Stuff I actually did and had success at. I don't do the little fake courses using a bunch of other people's content and all that. No, I'm, I'm able to teach my courses right off the top of my dome because I do it on that level. So I'm not using PowerPoints and slides and note cards. I'm teaching you just every video is shot. One take, 
straightforward because all that that all that information you getting is in me so on tonygasacademy.com it's real courses not the course like these internet marketers be doing these little fake information they ain't how i get down hey thank you so much god bless you we'll talk soon